welcome back to my studio and a very warm welcome if this is your first time here with us on this lovely channel called Stitch and Create where we just have some fun with fabric. That's my main aim is to make this really, um, it's about what I do but it's also about what might inspire you to have a go at something yourself as well. I try my best to show you close up what I'm doing um, and you know I really enjoy doing this, so I'm grateful that you're all here. It's a beautiful summer's day here. It's really quite toasty outside, which for Cumbria is quite something, I have to say. We've had a lot of sunshine this last week, and I'm very grateful to, for the big, we have a big um, ash tree out there, which gives us lots of shade, which I'm very grateful for. And it's fairly cool in here. If I keep the doors and windows shut, it's really quite nice, because then I can't work still. So today, what am I gonna be showing you today? Well. I've kind of decided that I'm going to do something seascapey. I've got something I'm doing for a friend and I think it's time that I actually got on and did it because you know what it's like when somebody says, oh, will you just do this for me? And you just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, six years later you're going, oh, shucks, oh, shucks, I didn't do that for that person. But it's actually a commission, so I'd like to take that up and get on with it. Um, I'm going to be working in this sort of fashion. I don't know whether I can show you this really closely, uh, this is done with my embellishing machine, which as you know is like my kind of right hand, hello right hand, um, and I'm going to be blending fabrics and creating, like it's a bit like painting really, I think the ability of the embellisher is so good at blending fabrics. It creates lovely textures, it changes surfaces, but it also lets you really put colours together. Um, and sort of blend them together in a really nice way. Obviously you can do that just with free machining, it can be just just as good because you can use your, your, your uh, what am I trying to say, you can use your stitching to do the blending, you know, if you harmonise your colours nicely you can quite easily do that without an embellishing machine. But for me the embellisher just makes it a little bit easier and um, yeah, a bit more exciting maybe. So I've got lots of, um, I've still got my fabrics out from my butterflies, I'll be honest, I didn't really get around to tidying up very much. Although you may notice that I've had a little change around in here, and I'll perhaps try and show you a bit of a close up. Um, um, can I do that today? Yeah, go on. This is a handbag that I made um, a little while ago, and it was basically, I was doing a picture as well, I did a lovely picture. And I thought, oh, you know what, I think I'd really like to make a handbag. Because I made, I have made lots of handbags in the past. I used to make a lot of handbags. So it's got lovely spotty fabric inside. Ooh, there's the lining. It's got a little bit of old blanket for the fastener. And this is just done, again, I'll try and, try and give you a close-up. Um, it's got really lovely stitching done with my embellisher. And a nice bright button. And what I love is that um, I made a denim strap and I actually wrote on here, um, oh, what did I write? Oh, joined up thinking I wrote on this one. I quite like to put a little motto on my handbags. The one that I use every day, is some, it says something like, um, you know, live for today or something like that. It's quite nice, just a little something on there. So making something like this is really satisfying. It's it's very, it's rather delicate for everyday use. So to be honest, I mostly just hang it up in my studio. But I do quite like making things which are not necessarily art to hang on your wall. There's a lot of pleasure to be had in having a bag like this that you might use for special occasions and things. Um, so I've kind of changed my display a little bit, tweaked it. I've kind of gone a bit sea-ish because I feel as though that's nice for the summer. And I do like to change what I've got around me. Don't, don't you like to just do a bit of pottering, a bit of fiddling? It's quite a nice way to actually, another way to spark creativity actually, is you just fiddle with what you've got around you. Just have a little bit of a tweak here and a tweak there. And just, I think, moving things around because everything gets a bit stuck in its place. And it's quite nice just to rearrange your displays of whatever it is you've got. Um, so I'm going to get on and choose some fabrics. I've got a few little ideas going on. I want it to be fairly vibrant, this, I think, thinking about the person I'm making it for, and I think that's just going to be fun to do. So I'll get my fabrics on and get showing you what I'm going to do. Fly, buzz off, you're not on to do you? Right, so this is where we're going to get started. What I've done first of all, apart from getting some fabrics out to choose some colours, is I've got a piece of my favourite cotton uh, interlining, which is for curtain interlining, 
which is really nice and soft. It's a bit like one of those posh ones you get for doing quilting, but it's an awful lot cheaper to buy. <laughs> and I really like it. This is quite a nice thin one. It's not too, um, it's not too sort of puffed up. So this is going to be what I'm going to do my base with. Um, sometimes I would put a whole colour of a background fabric on, but for this I'm not going to. I'm just going to be embellishing pieces on and I'm going to be using uh, strips like this which have got a lot of colour in them. If I was just wanting to use, say, um, just sort of organzas straight away, I wouldn't do that because it will show the background through and you'll get a sort of an uneven set of colours going on. So I've kind of been choosing some colours. I'm doing a sunset and it's a sort of a sunset plus um, a bit of the sea. So I've got some sort of sunsetty colours going on here. I'm looking for really bright, vibrant colours because that's what I want to use. Um, but I've also got a bit of sort of purple in the mix because I want to add a bit of dark to it. Um, I've got a bit of gold in the mix which is going to be put in somewhere. I've also got a little bit of this which is really quite nice and I may be using some of this meshy stuff as well to add some highlights. I don't know at this stage. It's very early in my process I can tell you. Um, what I've done so far as I say is I've got some fabrics. I've got a lot of these nice satin fabrics in these very bright colours. It's not showing you the satin side, there we go. These are sort of, um, they're sort of from um, a sewing shop nearby who do dresses for, I don't know, ballerinas and things, you know, when girls go to dance classes, or it's a sort of a lining fabric, it's that kind of thing. It's a satin anyway, so it's got a nice shine to it, which I really like. The purple I've got out here is a bit finer. I'm not sure what kind of fabric this is, actually, but I thought that will add a nice darkness, dark quality to it without detracting from those colours, I think. I've got a bit of, bit of gold in the mix as well. Um, so I've got some lace as well because I want to add some of the sort of colour mixing with these, these what I call finer fabrics, I suppose they are. The lace and the organzas are what I will use to mix the colours. So I'm going to do base colours using the... Um, I suppose these are opaque, aren't they? These are the stronger stronger colour for the base. And I'll be doing those in strips, kind of like this. Kind of like this. This is very rough. This is very rough, okay. Um, and you can start to see how you might start to pull the sunset together. Might put that there. This is very badly cut, ladies and gentlemen. It's just how this fabric kind of cuts. It's not very brilliant. But when it's embellished, it'll look better, I think. Um, I'm just going to show you roughly where I'm heading with this, okay? Um, these are not quite the colours I might be using, they're not quite in the right order necessarily, okay? But what I have got is my favourite thing to use, which is a, a, mount, uh, a mount for this. So this gives me a rough idea of what it's going to start looking like as the picture develops. So this is uh, 6 by 8 so it's not very big, I'm not working very big today which is going to be a challenge in itself, because I usually work a bit bigger than this, I would say. Um, well, I used to anyway. I think probably I'm working bigger these days. So that's, and then, as I say, you're going to put these... Oh, here's, here's a nice strippy bit. Look, you can start to add these bits in, which can blur the edges for you. You can start to put a bit of gold in. Um, it's a process. It's a bit like painting a picture. I'm going to use a process of layering, adding colours in, having a little look at it, and seeing how it goes. The other thing, colours I'm going to want to be using, I'm looking at some, getting some blues in as well. I don't want it just to have the sunset colours as such. I'm looking for some blue colours. But what I'm interested in, sorry, I'll just try and get this in the right place, get myself organised. Um, I think you can see that. I'm trying to show you both sets of colours going on here. So what I've picked out are some blues and some purples. What I'm seeing is, what I wanted to show you was though how some colours you put next to it, that just sort of kills it. Those are too drab, too dark, too dull compared to the colour palette that I'm using. They would have a place in something else. I often do this, I get a box of fabrics out and I'll put them next to each other to see whether things um, kind of sing, whether they add to what I'm doing or whether they take away from it. So I quite like that. It's not quite the blue I want, but it's got that strength of colour. That's kind of more the blue I want, but I'm not sure whether that's going to work. I'm not sure. Or maybe we start to add a mix of them together, you see. I've also got this blue, 
which again I quite like but it might be a bit too sort of royal bluish. Um, the, the perfect one I kind of found was this. This is a very odd little piece of fabric that I've had lying around but I don't have very much of it and it's got, an, it's got a natural stripe to it but it's kind of the colour I want to be using. So whether I could use, I've got another little scrap of it here, whether I could use this in little um, lozenge shaped bits. I could cut little strips off it and just add it in so I get the hint of the blue without having to have a big piece of it. Um, I've also got this sort of colour which again if you compare it's not dissimilar to this sort of greyer colour but it's a much better tone with these colours here I think. Um, that's a possibility. So I've got this paler lilac -y colour which again might go in the mix I'm not sure if I put those both in it might be good it might not I don't know. Um, it's just playing around because they often look different also when they're embellished. So I've got this blue which I do quite like. Let's move that up there a little bit. I quite like that but again I'm just not sure. It's the, it's the idea of putting blue in the mix is just throwing me a little bit at the moment but I will work with it. Um, and I think the first thing I'm really going to do is I'm going to take some little pieces of this, I'm going to cut myself a little piece of um, interlining, even smaller than this, and I'm just going to embellish quickly some of the colours down and see what happens when I put them together. And that just is helpful. Um, uh, it just sort of helps, it's all feeding um, my colour mixing really, and nothing's going to be perfect. I'm using the colours I've got in, there might be the perfect colour in your head that you think you should be using, that you'd really like to have in but you haven't got, and I think sometimes you have to just step back from that and just say, well what colours have I actually got, what could I actually use that I've actually got in, and often making do actually works quite well, it works better than you th you're sort of lusting after this perfect piece of fabric, just use what you've got and play with it until it sort of starts to sing and comes together. So that's what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make myself a little sample, I'm going to get my embellisher going and that'll make me feel happy when I actually just starting this up. This is a project I've been putting off for months, I'll be absolutely honest with you. I've let other things come along to the top of the pile because I wasn't sure how I was going to do it and it's a commissioned piece and commissions are always a little bit more scary than just doing it off the top of your head. So. Um, yeah, so, but I'm very pleased that I'm actually starting it. And I've started by getting my fabrics out, starting to pull some colours together. I have got a photograph I'm working from, um, but I don't want to be too specific. The thing with the photograph is you can get sucked into trying to make it absolutely like the photograph. And I think sometimes you have to kind of step back from that and just let your imagination take over and create your version of it. You know, the photograph is a photograph of a time um, when the photograph was taken and it was taken by a person who isn't you and I think this is your time to put into the picture what you want um, or at least it wasn't taken by me in this instance um, it's an opportunity for you to put your creativity into it your version of it and hopefully if I tune in enough to what I think my, my buyer is going to want I think it'll be okay um, I try and sort of feel my way into these things and if it works for me often it's absolutely right for the person I'm making it for to be honest. If it pleases my eye it's usually okay. So always go with how things feel to you, you know, if the colours don't make you go whoa yeah that's fabulous, um, if they make you go ooh I don't know about that then I would say don't put those colours in, choose the ones that make you go whoop de whoop. So right, I'm going to get on now, stop wittering to you and get on.